big step forward. Tell us what, from your point of view, what did we learn about your vaccine at this point? What are we confident of? Well, quite a lot, actually. Um, we, I, we had just finished running a phase three efficacy trial in the UK, and we got really good results there. Uh, but when we started this trial in the US, which is 30,000 people, we were enrolling in a time period when in the US, uh, the variants started to be circulating and 82% and, and of our trial, uh, people uh, who got sick were sick from the variants. And that's what everybody's been worried about. And there's been no efficacy trial against uh, variants. And so our trial, while it got 90% overall efficacy against the variants, which were 82% of, of uh, our trial, we got 93% uh, efficacy. And so that's really important uh, to talk about future uh, vaccin vaccination. And there are a couple other, uh, I think, reasonably important parts of it as well. There's, you, you, worry about, uh, you worry about severity of disease and, and, you, and, you, and you classify them as mild or moderate or severe, but we had zero moderate or severe. So we had 100% efficacy against severe disease and, and, and moderate and severe disease. And that's, that's really what we were looking for and, and we got it. Uh, but we also got, um, and you know, we got 82% of the trial was in variants. The rest of the trial, uh, the 18% was in non-variants or, or mainly uh, viruses that were similar to the original Wuhan strain. And we got 100% variant, 100% protection against that. So a lot of good data coming out of this. And it shows, the thing right. maybe that's most important is it shows that our vaccine works consistently in different clinical trials in different geographies. And so we're really, we're really pleased with the results. Uh, and that combines with, of course, in vaccines, safety uh, is, is paramount. And we have probably the most benign safety profile of any vaccine. Uh, Stan, as you say, I've got your fact sheet in front of me, which was very helpful, by the way. And it showed with respect to variants, 93.2% uh, efficacy, but I'm not sure which variants. And the one that people seem to be focused on right now is that Delta variant uh, that seems to be a little more virulent than some others. Do you have enough information from this test to know how you do against the Delta variant? No, we don't. We, we, we didn't have enough cases of Delta in the U.S. during that time period. So most of the variants were the U.K., the uh, alpha variant, and um, so, but we did have some beta and delta, uh, but just not enough numbers to be able to really tell. And, and although we, we feel that the vaccine is, is, is stimulates a broad enough immune response that we will be effective against the delta and others, uh, this trial did not show that. Uh, Stan, you have a vaccine that you've shown is efficacious and that it is safe. What stands between you and getting shots into arms? Yep. A lot of work, but a lot of work that we're, we're, we're running 24-7. In addition, when you when you file for the either the FDA or the Europe or, or, Brit, or Brit, uh, the UK, you need a package of data that includes the clinical efficacy, which we have probably the best in the world, clinical safety. Uh, we probably have the best in the world there. And then we have to show that we manufacture the product uh, consistently. And so we have taken this, we, we have taken approach uh, which is a bit unusual. We, we actually started as a biotech company. One year ago today, we had zero manufacturing capacity. And since then, we've, we've established ourselves in eight different countries, eight different manufacturing sites. And we need to have a package that shows every time we make a batch of product, whether we make it in the Czech Republic or whether we make it in the US or whether we make it in India or Korea, each batch is the same. That requires an analytical package showing comparability between all that. And we're in the middle of, of, of uh, uh, putting all that those data together. And when we do, we will submit the package to all the agencies at the same time. And with the expectation that, that uh, there'll be approvals at different time periods, but, but uh, approvals uh, from all the agencies. Stan, we've just come off, as you know, a G7 summit over in Cornwall with a lot of focus, not just on the United States, not just on Europe, but the rest of the world, particularly low and middle income countries that really have fallen far behind. Uh, what do you expect in terms of this vaccine, assuming it gets approval, contributing to, uh, re to really remedying that situation in low and middle income countries? I, I, I actually think we're the best placed of any company to do that. A year ago, we, we recognized that if you're gonna stop this pandemic, you, you can't just stop it in the US and, and it's a global problem. And we, we tied up 
So again, we're a biotech company headquartered in the United States with, with plants in, in uh, Europe, but we don't know anything about distributing, uh, uh, making and distributing vaccines for low and middle income countries. We tied up with Serum Institute as a partner. They're our strong partner right now. They are the largest vaccine manufacturer in the world. They're in India and they supply actually doses of vaccine to two thirds of the kids of the world. They know how to get that uh, in. And so we got together and we, we got together with uh, this COVAX facility that, that uh, Biden just, uh, Mr. Biden just uh, mentioned that they're going to donate a billion doses to. We are promised, uh, we have an agreement with them to supply them 1.1 billion doses in the next 12 months. And, we'll, and so most of our doses in the beginning will go through this facility to low and middle income countries. I think that's really important. Uh, that we can say that. And one of the reasons our vaccine is going to be so important in that area, not only is because our general efficacy and safety is great, but it's also a very stable product. And, and we can ship it at just standard refrigerated temperatures and it can go anywhere in the world. Uh, so yeah. we think that's a really important part of uh, the fight against the pandemic. And finally, Stan, you were set up as a biotech company really to address things like custom made vaccines like this. You were the right person at the right place at the right time. What do you right. anticipate going forward? Will you be making boosters, do you think, for the United States? Will you be adjusting yours for flu? What's next for Novavax? Well, thank you. That's, those are all the things I could say. We're <laughs> going to be making this. I think we've got a great booster. Uh, we are in a trial right now that shows that is showing comparing our vaccine against the uh, RNA, our mRNA vaccines and against the uh, viral vector vaccines against and, and it's mixing and matching. And so we'll be able to see, the world will be able to see uh, the safety profile of our boosting vaccine against the others and the immunogenicity profile of our vaccine against the others. And I, my expectation is, is that the vast majority of our market in the United States in 2022 and beyond is actually gonna be as a booster. And um, um, I think it's, there's, there's a great long-term opportunity. This is not just a pandemic situation anymore. It's gonna, the pandemic is gonna change into a uh, seasonal, annual seasonal uh, flu vaccine, as you mentioned, but we have a flu vaccine and combining our COVID vaccine with our flu vaccine is gonna make a great product uh, for, for a, a commercial value.